Hey, this is Alex, and thank you for joining me. Um, as you can see, I'm shooting in a different room of my house. Uh, hopefully it's not, it's a little more visually appealing, I guess. So I've been collecting Criterions for about a year now. And uh, while I've actually really enjoyed every single release that I've gotten, um, I've enjoyed all the movies that I've watched thus far. I only have a few that I haven't watched. Um, there are certain releases that have definitely stood out to me as my ideal way of a criterion. Like when we talk about criterions being some of the best releases, these are kind of the ones I'm I'm thinking of when I say that. Uh, as as of shooting this right now, um, this is the beginning of February. We have a flash sale most likely coming up. Uh, right at the end of February or the beginning of March. And I thought, okay, um, since we have a flash sale coming up, I'm going to be picking up more Criterions. Why don't I go over um, my favorites? And so I want to go over the top 10 favorites that I had, and it was really hard narrowing this list down. Um, in fact, um, I, I'm not a big fan of doing lists to begin with, um, just because I, I'm constantly in flux with how I feel about things. So I'd like to show you this top 10, but also with a little asterisk, uh, this list could change at any time. So, um, I figure, you know, maybe, you know, here is my list right now at this time of the year, maybe next year it'll be completely different, or maybe it'll be the same releases in a different order. I don't know. But as of right now, I'd like to give you the top 10s. But before I go through my top 10 list, um, I want to kind of give you the, an idea of like what my criteria was. And that's basically, what it, how does it work for me as an overall package? So um, a big part of it's going to be the artwork or, or how they package the, the um, release all by itself. Um, definitely whether or not I like the movie and how much I like the movie, um, the supplemental material, um, and that kind of thing. This is in kind of a general order. Um, even as I've been going over my list, I keep wanting to change the order of things. I think I've more or less settled on a final order. Um, but for me, it's not a hard list. It's, it's like for right now in this moment, this is how I'm arranging them. But honestly, the, a few of these could swap places very easily. All right, so no, for number 10, I've got True Stories. Um, I really enjoy this movie by John Byrne. Um, this is the only film that he's directed, and I'm more of a fan of his music in Talking Heads than I am of the actual movie, but I do really like the movie. It's, it's just weird. It's quirky. It's kind of offbeat. I think one of the things I really love about this um, the set, first of all, is, uh, you get the album, like you get the soundtrack in this, um, in this film. And I, I think that's the only Criterion release that has the soundtrack. One problem with it though, it's on CD and I don't have a CD player anymore. Um, and that's kind of why it's at number 10. Um, but I love that they did it, and I, I, I want to just kind of go ahead and get a CD player now. The CD isn't, is alone wasn't enough to actually get it at number 10. The thing that gets it at number 10 is this insert, this tabloid insert. It's, it's not even that it looks like a tabloid. It feels like a tabloid. It's printed on newspaper. Um, and I guess these were all, like, tabloid clippings that John Byrne had that, you know, that inspired the film in a lot of ways. Um, but you also get the essay in here and everything, um, and I, I love it. Like, what a great release. You get a tabloid, you get the, the album. On top of, you know, um, your kind of standard um, special features, you got um, a commentary on there, you've got, like, some documentary footage, you got some behind-the-scenes footage. Um, so, you know, definitely a lot to like in this, in this. It's not skimping in any way on special features. That's it. Number 10 true stories. All right, for my number nine pick, um, it's actually one of the first 
uh, Criterions that I ever purchased, um, and that is Videodrome. So this one is more of an aesthetically pleasing one to me. Um, first of all, as far as supplements goes, um, one of the things I like the most about it is that there are two commentaries, one by David Cronenberg and then one with James Woods and Deborah Harry. But overall, uh, this one is definitely just because of the physical packaging for me, which I know is kind of shallow, but I don't, I don't really care. But I love the color bars for the, the C logo and the, the band that goes below it on all the films. Um, I love the fact that, you know, when you pull that out, it looks like a Betamax cassette on both sides. Long live the new flesh written on there. Visually speaking, I just think the whole thing is like wonderful to look at. I mean, it was a great put together and it's also to my knowledge, um, the only like digipack that's also like the jewel case. So I kind of wish more of the digipacks were made this way. You know, I get why they don't, you know, it's probably more expensive if they're already doing a digipack. It kind of seems like that's a little bit more production value. So the case on top of the digipack is probably more expensive, but I do like it and it feels sturdy and I just love it. So there you go. Number nine. All right. So for my number nine pick, I have uh, a movie that I just saw for the first time uh, a few days ago and it kind of stuck with me um, for a while. And that's The New World by Terrence Malick. This movie is gorgeous. Um, and I wasn't expecting how contemplative the movie was, um, how throughout the movie you're getting the internal dialogue of, of different characters um, based on kind of the scene that's happening and, and the things that they're going through. Um, the movie alone has been kind of rattling around in my head. Um, in fact, I started making my top 10 list and I knew this had to get on there, not just for the movie, but the fact that there are three different cuts of the film. Um, I did watch the longest cut, the extended cut, but there's also a theatrical cut. And then there's also the first cut, which is somewhere in the middle of the two. Um, I think I want to watch the first cut next just because, you know, I don't know if the extended cut is kind of like the final cut of the film. Um, you know, it may be. There's like interviews with, uh, with, you know, various members of the cast. We got makings of, we got documentaries about the film. There's, there's a lot to dive deep dive into, but I think I do want to watch the first cut next because that to me, it's sort of like their, their, that initial gut reaction that, you know, Terrence Malick had to writing the film. Uh, just, to get that perspective of like what 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 did initially he feel was the completed version of the film you know the new world i highly recommend this one check it out i don't hear enough people talking about this i kind of feel like i want to do a more in-depth review at some point so if you would like to see that please put some comments in the in the in the comment section of the video uh, and I'll I'll maybe think about doing that. I've been I've been wanting to review or at least discuss some more of the um, releases that I have, especially with how many I have. So this this may be one of them in the future. So you know we'll see. All right. So my number seven release uh, in the in my top ten is really based on pure nostalgia. I mean that's the main thing about this. It's a hundred percent nostalgia, and that's the Princess Bride. So first of all, the movie's amazing. I've seen it maybe 20 times in my entire life. Um, but that's not all. This, this release is nostalgia upon nostalgia because, as I'm sure you've seen in many other videos, they created like a little, a little, a little storybook. That's what this is. It is a storybook. Um, it's like the books I would, I would, I would see in the library growing up in elementary school where they would remove the dust jacket off of them. And so you had that woven cloth happening. And then on top of that, the inside 
where the essay is, it's attached. It's not even a loose booklet. There we go. Scenes from the scenes from the movie of of you know painted to look like a storybook. Um, I love it. I love it. But on top of that, you know, there's a commentary with, um, uh, with it's got like Billy Crystal. It's got Peter Falk in it. It's got Rob Reiner. Um, you know, you've got multiple behind the scenes. You've got some footage that Carrie Elwes um, shot on on location. Um, there's a lot to, to, to dive in here with the supplements. Um, definitely not lacking on supplements here. There's also an audiobook, um, like an edited version of the original story, Princess Bride. Like, I would have loved it if this came with the, the Princess Bride, the book, because um, that would have been great. Like, that would have been perfect if they actually had the book alongside it, like a little book duo pack. But, you know, I, I love the feel of this. Just holding it feels nice. Um, I mean, look at that. I love it. I love it. So move on. All right. So for my number six release, um, again, this is very much about the packaging, uh, um, but the movies in it are fantastic. And that's Three Fantastic Journeys by Carol Zeman. So um, first of all, I'm just going to get into the packaging real quick, because that was the main thing that jumped out at me. And you don't see this very often, even in Criterion releases, you don't see it. So we've got a little insert fold out just kind of made to look like an old kind of an old-time newspaper I think or like a little you know a little pamphlet but the main thing I love about this is the pop out so we've got the three movies on here and every single one has you know kind of a little pop out aesthetic to it so we've got a little, little hot air balloon there. And then, of course, we've got this one with the dude being shot out of the cannon. Um, my God. Fantastic production value uh, in a in a digipack. Um, but on top of that, the movies. How 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 is Carol Zeman not? You know, how is he not celebrated any more than he is? I mean, it's kind of like right up there with Ub Iwerks, um, I would say, who, used, if you don't know, used to work um, with Walt Disney on his early projects. Um, there's a, a, a wealth of supplemental material here all about Carol Zeman um, that the Carol Zeman Museum had put out and put together. Um, there's a documentary called Film Adventurer, um, that includes um, Terry Gilliam and uh, Tim Burton speaking on there, uh, you know, talking about just sort of the, the visual brilliance that is Carol Zeman. Um, there's multiple versions of some of the movies, so you get like the American releases as well as the original releases. I do want, uh, personally stick with the original releases, but it's really nice to have, you know, the like weird... Um, English dub versions, I guess, with it. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful, like, package. Like, look at that. I mean, again, you know, I love it that it's a cutout on top of that. So you get this artwork behind this artwork. It's just a beautiful set. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely worth being in the my top ten Criterion releases. Um... Yeah, that's that's really all I need to say about that one. It's just it's just beautiful inside and out, beautiful work. Oh, on top of it, you get some early shorts by Carol Seaman, so that's awesome. Um, yeah. So number five on my list is pure supplemental material. Made this an incredible package. So very recent release, we have Wally by Andrew Stanton. Um. First of all, I love the artwork on here. Um, I don't, I haven't heard anyone really point this out and it's obvious, but I love that you don't even have the characters on here. This is just trash. This is, this is just trash sitting here. Um, you know, but made to look like Wally and Eve and you know, it's, it's just really beautiful original artwork. 
Um, you've got Wally's trailer on the inside. Uh, you've got the booklet made to look like, like kind of like a little blueprint manual. Um, you got the B and L logos all over everything. So they really designed this package. Um, as sort of a love letter to the movie. And I, it, it almost feels like, you know, they really understood the, the movie. But on top of that, even if the package wasn't as beautiful as it was, there is a huge treasure trove of supplemental material, um, both new and old. Um, you know, I, I haven't even had a chance to go through all of these yet. I, I did try to go through some of the, like, um, the behind-the-scenes um footage and and uh, making of Wally. -E. Um, I haven't gone through the Pixar story yet. There's the Bernie short on it, which kind of gives like a little side story to the movie that I loved. Um, there's like this whole thing on all of the different robots in the movie. There's a ton of stuff. I can't remember everything that's on here. I know there's two commentaries, one with uh, Andrew Stanton, one with other members of the production crew. Um, Fantastic release. So much, so much here to devour. So definitely give this one a check out. Um, I mean, people have been raving for it. Plus, it's the most beautiful this is ever going to look. You've got 4K as well as Blu-ray. Um, you know, I, 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 I need more time in my life to be able to go through the, the volume of supplements on here. So there's that one. So number four, I've got Picnic at Hanging Rock. Um, but I've got the version that comes with the book. So obviously, let's go ahead and get it out of the way now. This one's out of print. You can't get it from Criterion. You, you got to get lucky to find it in a store. Um, I found this one on eBay. The, the supplemental material is very, you know, standard, I would say. I, I would say bare minimum you would expect from a Criterion release. Um, you know, you've got, uh, you know, interviews, you've got, um, introductions in the film. Um, there's no, I don't think there's a commentary on here, um, which is unfortunate. I would have really, really liked a commentary for this movie. Um, this movie is so strange, but the book is great. Um, any of the releases I have that come with a book, I read the book first I read that source material and then I go into the movie and this book is way better than I thought it was going to be. It does start out extremely slow. So if you do get your manage to get your hands on here, just be aware the first couple of chapters are a little slow and they almost feel pointless. But then as the, the, the story picks up and, you know, it really gets underway, you start finding out how important those early chapters really were about how they set up certain members of the, uh, the certain characters and some of their inner thoughts. Um, plus also the artwork on here, um, is very evocative of the, um, original painting, um, by, I can't remember, can't remember. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but it is also called Picnic at Hanging Rock. Um, and it looks very much like that artwork. So um, I was surprised at how well the movie translated the book over. So there's only a few things in the book that didn't get included that I would have liked to have in there. But they did a very good job of just, um, you know, have setting the mood for, for you know, the... the that the, the, the mystery at hand really affected the house of, um, you know, the young women, the people that work there and how it just affected a whole community. Um, so Picnic at Hanging Rock, it's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful movie. If you can get your hands on this, it's absolutely worth it. All right. So for number three on my list, a little bit of a cheat. Um, but I really couldn't choose between these two. Um, first of all, they're both by the same director. Second of all, um, physical presentation as well as supplements were both very close in terms of quality and amount. Um, so they felt identical to me. They felt identical. And that's Grand Budapest Hotel and Moonrise Kingdom. Supplemental material, you've got like commentary, you've got behind the scenes, on-set footage. Um, so really it kind of came down to like, 
also on top of that, just the artwork involved. So, you know, with Grand Budapest Hotel, you know, you, you take that out, you've got these like kind of matching vignettes. Um, then you go in and, you know, the, the inside itself just feels like that hotel you would find in the seventies. You've got, you know, this little booklet that, and, and this one I'm not crazy about just cause it like folds out, but everything on it is gorgeous. You know, it's just kind of unwieldy to look at because it's so long. <laughs> I love, you know, the little, that little essay booklet in here and the artwork, you know, the painting in the movie, you know, you got a huge, I'm not going to unfold this, but you got a huge double sided poster. That's the same artwork on the, uh, on the box. And then you got for Moonrise Kingdom also slides out. And then you've got kind of photographs of the cast. One thing I really love about this is that all the, all that physical material is held in a nice little pocket so it doesn't slide around or fall out when you open it. Um, but you know, the physical stuff in this one, I actually like a little more. So the essay booklet is made to look like a little magazine. It's even got a little, little sticker on there. Not going to unfold this one either, but it's got like the map and it is double sided. So you get two maps on there of the, of the island in the movie. You got a little, little flyer. This one feels like a little thin, like I could easily damage it. So I always got to be careful with it. Um, but you got the, the, uh, you know, the, um, what would you call it? Yeah. The flyer, you know, the little post-it for the, the play in there. You got this, you know, this, uh, group photo, Grand Budapest Hotel, Moonrise Kingdom. They're both my number three. So we're getting down to it. Number two, this is an all around thing. So I'm going to just say. The box for this is one of my favorite boxes. I love it. That's dazed and confused. So it's cut out very similar to the Carol Zaman box. Um, but it's got the huge poster. This I will undo because I love this poster. Just kind of like a cool, I don't know, car poster <laughs> for dazed and confused. Um, it's got this massive booklet in there made to look like a little spiral binder with a ton of artwork and photos from set. Um, you know, got the inside here, but I love this. Take the movie out, got your stems and seeds hiding under there, hidden. Um, that was a surprise when I took that disc out, but the biggest surprise on this you know, it's right here, right here in the copyright. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got first printing 2011. That's what I'm talking about. Why is it there? Like, there's no reason for it to be there. It is such a weird little Easter egg on the box, but I love it. I don't even know why I was looking there in the first place. I completely found that by mistake, but it's there and I love it. So on top of that, the movie's just great. You know, um, again, kind of like the bare minimum amount you'd expect from a Criterion film as far as um, supplemental material. There is a 50 minute documentary on there um, and you do have an audio commentary. So I'm glad there's one on there. Um, you got footage from their 10 year celebration. You got um, audition footage, deleted scenes, all of that. So you got, a, you got a pretty decent amount of supplemental material on here. Um, it feels nice too. It feels nice for a digipack too. I don't know, it just feels hefty and I love it. So Dazed and Confused, great movie, number two, but what's number one? All right, so now we're down to it, number one. You may have noticed all of the previous uh, add-on, you know, previous entries to the list were digipacks. I love a digipack, but this one's not a digipack, and yet it's my number one. 
And that's because it's fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Here's the thing. Not even my favorite Terry Gilliam film. But I love this release. And it's because of the commentaries. It's 100% because of the commentaries. You get three of them. And I'm going to suggest you watch them in the order that I watched them in. Start with your director's commentary, Terry Gilliam. Then move on to the actor and producer commentary. You've got Johnny Depp, uh, Benicio Del Toro, and um, uh, Layla Nibulsi, who produced the, the film. And you hear a lot of, you know, this was absolutely a passion project from her. You hear all through it how much love she has, not just for the source material, but for Hunter S. Thompson, who was a friend of hers, and she mentions even staying with him. Um, and then after those two, I highly recommend listening to the Hunter S. Thompson commentary, uh, which he recorded before he died. It makes the movie make a lot of sense, you know, and he seems like a really sweet guy, too, on top of it. There are things in the movie that bothered him, how he's portrayed as treating individuals in the movie, and it bothered him that he was portrayed that way. Um, you know, when it was just maybe a choice that Johnny Depp made in the moment. Um, it's just an interesting guy. Um, not to mention, you get art by uh, Ralph Steadman on the cover, but uh, also like within the booklet, and then there's like a special feature on there. Uh, Hunter goes to Hollywood, and it's kind of like just, you know, the day that he was on set and filmed, but then also, you know, like behind the scenes. And it's also the day... Like, he's there on the day, um, the scene with um, uh, Harry Dean Stanton and Christina Ricci filming this, the, the sort of, like, weird uh, courtroom scene. Um, you know, it, it's very fun to watch. Um, but, yeah, this, it's, it's purely supplemental material. You know, if every Criterion film was not a digipack... You know, there were no digipacks, but they had this level of, um, you know, love for the supplementals material. Um, God, they, they would all be worth that $40 price. Easy. The only thing that could make this one better is if it was a release that came with the book. I absolutely want to read the book after not just watching the movie, but listening to the different commentaries. So, yeah, that is the list. That's top 10. So flash sales coming. Um, I have a little list of uh, potential movies I'm going to get. So when that flash sale happens and I get my package, I'll do an unboxing of that. Um, as I mentioned before, I would like to start doing some discussions of certain movies. Um, I've got a pretty decent list going now of ones I want to talk about. So um, yeah, comment below any movies that I should check out uh, in the Criterion Collection before this flash sale. I'm very open to some things. Uh, if there's any movies that you'd like me to, um, you know, review or talk about a little bit more in depth than I did here that I showed, um, absolutely put that in there. I would love to talk about all these movies. I would love a reason to, to deep dive into more of the supplemental material. There's so much that's offered here. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Alex. This was Make It Good. Happy watching.